Here's your wrestling news for April 18th, 2022. And your headlines for today include Roman Reigns breaks character big time at WWE Live event. What happened with LA Knight on WWE main event this week? What happened with Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins after SmackDown goes off the air? Ronda Rousey on using the ankle lock in WWE. AEW bans fan from holding signs after end forced motherhood makes it on air. Eric Bischoff believes Tony Khan spends ridiculous money on each episode of AEW Dynamite. Why The Undertaker refused to kick out of the 3D. Vince McMahon Netflix documentary likely to include WrestleMania 38 footage. Mickey James comments on negative reaction to her recent fan photo. Ex WWE wrestler announces he eloped and got married, and more. We're kicking off today with Roman Reigns, who for years was the quintessential good guy at WWE, but after years of fan backlash, the company wisely decided to turn him heel. Embracing his darker side in August 2020, the undisputed WWE Universal Champion has become the company's unquestionable top heel, but he still has a softer side to him. At a WWE Live event last Saturday, which WWE promoted as Saturday Night's Main Event, Reigns retained his title against Drew McIntyre, but cut a fully-fledged babyface promo after the match. In a character-breaking speech, Reigns thanked the fans for coming to the show and thanked them for supporting WWE superstars who, unlike other industries, don't get an off-season. The undisputed WWE Universal Champion also asked fans not to share his babyface promo online, so of course the first thing many fans did was post their videos on YouTube and social media. It's rare to see Reigns act in such a babyface manner and don't expect to see him speak this way the next time he's on a globally televised episode of Raw or SmackDown, but even the head of the table couldn't help but acknowledge the WWE Universe last weekend. Before last Friday's SmackDown got underway, LA Knight had his call up to the main roster, but not as an in-ring superstar. Appearing in the ring to cut a promo, Knight announced the start of his new stable, Knight Model Management, and introduced Mace as the group's first member. Mace appeared without any of his look from Retribution and had ditched the face mask to join Knight and certainly seemed more confident in his new role alongside Knight. At this time, there's no word on who will be next to join Knight Model Management, but after losing his most recent feud to Gunther in NXT 2.0, it appears that L.A. Knight and his impressive skills on the mic will be used in a much different role than he's used to now that he's on the main roster. Fans at last Friday's taping of SmackDown got a special treat before the show, but they also got a special bonus match after the blue brand went off the air. Since returning to WWE at WrestleMania 38, the only matches Cody Rhodes has had on TV is while well on Raw, but last weekend, the American Nightmare made a trip to SmackDown. In a post-show dark match last Friday night, Rhodes faced Rollins in a WrestleMania rematch that was once again won by the former AEW TNT Champion. After Rollins mocked Dusty's flip-flop and fly, Cody hit three crossroads to get the win in what was said to be an incredible match between the two. Rhodes cut a post-match babyface promo to send the crowd home happy, and we'll have to see if he can keep up his winning ways when he faces Rollins once more next month at WrestleMania Backlash. Ronda Rousey will also compete at Backlash and plans on becoming SmackDown Women's Champion when she faces Charlotte Flair in an I Quit match. In a match where the submissions will play a key role, Rousey has various options at her disposal, but has made the ankle lock her signature hold in WWE. Speaking in a vlog on her YouTube channel, Rousey explained that she's using the move in tribute to Kurt Angle, who helped her immensely when she joined WWE back in 2018. I just really want to be able to put over Kurt as the whole reason that I'm doing the ankle lock, and it's a way to pay homage to him. And that's all that I really care about getting out, because he was my first mentor in this business, and I never really got to honor him outside of our tag. I mean, people compare us all the time because we were athletes outside of WWE and then came to it. As an Olympian, he has been my hero since I was a little kid, so I love that he gave me the blessing to use the ankle lock. Like Angle, Rousey was thrust to the top of WWE in her rookie year and has impressive submission skills, but it remains to be seen whether she can dethrone Flair, one of two women to hold a victory over her in WWE. Now when you pay for a ticket to a wrestling show, you're given the chance to make your views on the show clear, but not every company appreciates some views being made. While promotions usually allow fans to hold up all kinds of signs, there are some signs companies don't want to appear on their programming, and that includes AEW. 
Following last Friday's rampage, a fan took to Twitter to say that he was banned by the All Elite promotion from holding up signs after the placards he was holding were about politics, not wrestling. The fan said he was banned after his End Forced Motherhood sign made it to air, but added that AEW security was totally respectful about it and said that he was treated very kindly. This individual also showed off some of the other signs he had ready to show, including calling for Dalton Castle to run for Texas governor. After calling themselves a fan-orientated product, or at least more fan-orientated than WWE, it's interesting that AEW would ban signs, but it's not hard to see why the company took this decision when it comes to signs that had little to nothing to do with the wrestling in the ring. With an estimated net worth of over $7 billion, AEW president Tony Khan has plenty of money at his disposal, and that number is only continuing to grow with AEW's popularity. Producing a globally syndicated wrestling promotion is expensive work, and now Eric Bischoff has weighed in on just how much an episode of Dynamite costs to make. Speaking on an ad-free show's exclusive episode of Strictly Business, Bischoff said, My guess is the cost of producing that show when they're having to travel and doing it live. I would be shocked if they were able to produce that show for less than $450,000 an episode. That doesn't include talent, I'm talking about producing the show. There's half that $865,000 a week. Now you've got to throw talent on top of that. Now you've got to throw travel on top of that. Now you've got to throw a lot of things on top of that. Spending so much on an episode, Bischoff questioned just how profitable AEW Dynamite can be and also questioned how TBS sees the AEW show. The WCW magnate said it's unclear whether TBS sees Dynamite as a beautiful home on a beautiful piece of property or whether it's seen as a rundown mobile home but in a nice neighborhood. Whatever the case may be, AEW has proven to be successful, despite reports that they're not yet profitable thanks to the work on the video game, but we'll just have to see how the company's finances change following the Discovery Warner Media merger. Throughout his three decades in the ring, The Undertaker faced literally hundreds of superstars, from legends like Hulk Hogan to Ric Flair to the likes of the giant Gonzalez and John Heidenreich. With 30 years in WWE alone, the Phenom obviously kicked out of a lot of finishing moves, but there's one move that he wanted to make sure was protected. Speaking on Steve Austin's Broken Skull sessions, Bully Ray discussed facing The Undertaker in 2004 and said how the 3D was heavily protected, even by the former world champion. Nobody kicked out of the 3D. If we hit the move, maybe there was a save or a pullout, nobody kicked out. As a matter of fact, at the Great American Bash when it was the Dudleys versus Taker, we said to Taker, if you want this, and he said, nope, you protected it for too long, we're not going to do it if it doesn't mean anything. I respect him so much for that. Facing the Dudleys in a concrete crypt match, the bout is perhaps best remembered for the bizarre ending which saw Undertaker win only to turn on his manager Paul Bearer, but fans re-watching will see that even the Phenom wanted to protect the 3D. At WrestleMania 38, Vince McMahon broke a lengthy streak by defeating Pat McAfee, marking the chairman's first win at the Showcase of the Immortals. Coming 21 years after his first match at WrestleMania, McMahon is now 1-4 in four at his biggest creation, but many in WWE didn't want it to happen. Fightful has learned that numerous people close to McMahon and on the creative team made it clear that they thought the match would be a terrible idea, saying that his age was too big an issue to overcome. McMahon's last match at WrestleMania before this year was back in 2010, where he lost to Bret Hart in what's considered one of the worst matches in WrestleMania history. Despite this feedback, McMahon insisted on competing and, after making the declaration, the creative team were left to figure out how to pull the match off. What fans saw is probably the best match we could expect from the 76-year-old chairman, who was said to have laughed off his awful stunner cell after the match, and all this happened despite some serious opposition behind the scenes. Last year, WWE announced that they are collaborating with Netflix to produce a documentary all about Vince McMahon. Since then, though, we haven't heard much about the project, but now there's been an update on the current state of production. According to PW Insider, the doc is still in production and will be very up-to-date, with plans for it to include footage from WrestleMania 38, where McMahon defeated Pat McAfee and took a stunner from Stone Cold Steve Austin. When it was announced, the McMahon doc was called one of the highest-budgeted documentaries in Netflix history, and after 40 years of running the company, WWE and Netflix are wanting to make sure this project goes according to plan. 
Over to Impact as Mickey James is one of the biggest names associated with the company and has met countless fans over the years. Unfortunately, James was recently the victim of some trolls online who mocked a recent photo of her with someone else. In the photo, the person has his hands wrapped around James in the traditional promo photo, and trolls mocked the fan for his weight and said that James is clearly uncomfortable with the pose. Taking to Instagram, James fired back at these trolls, explaining that she was the one who requested the pose and that the person in the picture is a good friend of hers who has supported her since day one. Explaining why she looks uncomfortable, the former Knockouts champion said how she'd been wearing bad shoes, had been on her feet all day, and had to deal with the pain from two matches and three days of signings. Mickey James has no time for hatred towards people she cares about, especially Leonard, who has supported her from the start, and hopefully her message of being a bit kinder changes at least some people on social media. And we're ending today with former WWE superstar James Ellsworth, who has gotten married this month in a very unique way. On social media, Ellsworth shared a photo of himself in a black suit and said that he eloped on Friday morning with his bride and that the actual wedding ceremony took place in a hot air balloon. Before his release in 2017, Ellsworth enjoyed a run as Carmella's on-screen manager and also had a brief return to WWE in 2018, but his departure the second time came after he was accused of sending inappropriate content to an underage fan. Since then, Ellsworth appeared for various promotions and has had a run with Impact Wrestling, and we're offering our congrats to him and his wife on this very happy occasion. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.